Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about the disease triangle. What is it? Well, some people would say, Brian, that must be out in my field. I've got this spot that always gets disease <laughs> problems. That's not what we're talking about. This isn't like the Bermuda Triangle or something of disease on your farm. This is three different things that are necessary for a disease to take hold in your crop. So if you're a non-farmer, you're probably wondering why we're talking about this, but we just think this is tremendously important because every crop out there can get diseases and we are constantly as farmers fighting these things. So not only do we have higher yields and greater profits, but also so we have healthier food in the end, whether that food is going for livestock or humans or any other use. All right, so the three points of the disease triangle are first, you've got to have a pathogen. And in a lot of soils, those pathogens are out there. They're just waiting for the right opportunity. And that opportunity involves having the right host crop there. So you've got a pathogen, you've got a host crop, and you've got to have the right environment. So for example, let's talk about sclerotinia white mold. It starts off as a little mushroom on the ground. What conditions or what environmental situations would help a mushroom grow? Well, if it has shade, if it's cool, and if it's wet. Well, if you've got those conditions in the environment and you've got the pathogen there and you've planted soybeans or sunflowers or dry beans that are a host crop, you've got all three points of that disease triangle and your odds of having a problem in the field are much higher. But here's the whole thing. We have fungicides to prevent fungal diseases. So as farmers, we're always thinking about this. All right, do we have the right host? Okay, if I plant corn, then I don't have to worry about the disease Darren was just talking about. But when I go back to soybeans, now I'm concerned number one. Then if I say it's in a field where I've had this issue before, all right, pathogen's probably there. So then as farmers, we're just looking for the right environment. So for example, if we're in a complete drought year, then we go, yep, I think I feel pretty comfortable not spraying the fungicide. But on the other hand, if it's a wetter year and you go, ooh, the conditions look right for this disease, that's when we're going to invest the dollars in the fungicide. Because here's the problem. You can't scout, see the disease, and then spray. At that point, you've already lost the yield. It has to be preventative. All right, let's turn to bacterial type diseases. And if that bacteria is in your field, let's say Goss's wilt, for example, that's a, a big problem in corn and you happen to have the right environment now you've got that host crop corn and for a lot of farmers they say man I need that corn for feed for my livestock what do I do well the best defense against some of those bacterial diseases like Goss's wilt is to get a non-host crop now I'm not saying you can't plant corn you just have to be really fussy some hybrids are actually pretty tolerant of Goss's wilt and do a nice job in those environments they just don't get much Goss's wilt on them so plant one of those tolerant hybrids or if if you have a resistant hybrid to certain problems, that would be even better. Well, once again, the disease triangle is you have to have the host, you need the pathogen, and the right environment. If you have all three of those things, then you are much more likely to have that particular disease that year. Well, disease can be a big problem out in crops, and so can our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 